Hi, everyone. Welcome to Dishing Drama with Dana Wilkie Uncensored. We have officially moved to Patreon. Here's a sneak peek of Dishing Drama with Dana Wilkie. Come on, bitch, bitch, bitch let's go. <laughs> Welcome back, you guys, to part two of my conversation with Jennifer Saginor, who wrote Playground, A Child Lost Inside the Playboy Mansion, and also was featured on Secrets of Playboy, which she's going to discuss today. That was a docuseries that A&E released and was quite popular. We talk about it in part one, and she continues to talk about it in part two. This part of the show is just so insightful. What I did is I looked at some of the questions people had on Reddit about Secrets of Playboy, especially in regards to a person named Paulina that is featured in the docuseries, a model, a friend of Jennifer's, who went to a shadow mansion and disappeared. And so I asked her some questions about that because I saw many people wondering about that part of the docuseries. And we also discuss a little bit further her father, Mark Saginor, relationship with Hugh Hefner. Uh, She gives me her insight into that because obviously there were many things that kind were alluded to in Secrets of Playboy, which was that maybe the relationship between Mark and Hugh was a little deeper than just friends. Jennifer has one of the rarest and unique viewpoints after living in the Playboy Mansion from 11 till her teen years and partying there thereafter. And I'm super excited for us all to continue the conversation. I would remind you if you get triggered by stories about sexual assault, drug use, and or the Playboy Mansion, please do not listen to this episode and skip this one. I remind you guys that Jennifer and I are both only coming from our personal experiences as we discuss Playboy and what we experienced, which may differ from some of the women that also went to the Playboy Mansion and were involved with Hugh Hefner. This is not in any way to take away from their truth of what they felt that they experienced either at the time or retrospectively, but we have to call it how we saw it from our viewpoint. And that's what this show is about. So buckle up, Buttercup. (laughs) Enjoy the ride. Slap some bacon on a biscuit and let's go. We're burning daylight. I didn't see necessarily this aggressive, you know, him like this dominating man that was trying to like have sex with these girlfriends and these and these and these women. I didn't, you know, like some of the stuff that was portrayed in that doc series, I did not experience. I did not see any of that. Um, I, you know, it was more just like, I'm not sure how much you want. I didn't know if you you know, I mean, many of them ended up saying, oh, it only lasted a couple minutes or a couple seconds or, you know, he, it was mechanical. Well, it's like, well, yeah, I, I wonder why, like, did, was he that into it? I don't know. Like, I just don't, I can't imagine that the, that these, some of these women were sort of, you know, boasting or, you know, really going on and on about their interest, you know, his interest in them when, I just, you know, I question that. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not. Do you think that he considered your dad his boyfriend? I think that he had very close male friends. And (laughs) I think (laughs) that he had, you know, really long-term, you know, my father was like his emotional and spiritual companion for 40 years. So they did, you know, per, you know, they partake in, you know, uh, orgies together, or had lots of group, you know, settings together and emotionally and spiritually. Absolutely. You know, I did just see him. I did not see him so aggressive with any of these women. I did not see that at all. Um, I never saw that side of him. I thought I saw someone who enjoyed, who preferred watching women together. I saw a man who, you know, preferred his intellectual and spiritual um, connections with his close male friends. And I, you know, didn't, 
I just don't, you know, some of the things that, that, that were portrayed, I can't see him, you know, really, I just didn't experience him that way. Um, well, he's hard. He was hard to talk to. I'm like pretty, I have a lot of conversational skills, I think. And I was like, always kind of like, felt like I was pulling teeth to get him to talk. Yeah. I mean, I think he was a very <laughs> private man and I think who, you know, I think that, um, the, yes, I think there was something probably expected and all the group sex and that sort of thing was something that kind of went with the times and was expected. And again, was a part of this big facade and this big image of like, Hey, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm hooking up with all of these women. Look at me, look how, you know, fat, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, yeah. I just, yeah. to me, it was just like, uh, okay. It's like, for me, it was just one big show. That's just what it is. It was just one big show. And I, you know, I want to stop Jennifer for one second and play you a soundbite from a Time magazine interview with Hugh Hefner on this point that Jennifer is making. I think it actually shows what Jennifer is talking about. Hugh Hefner is 82 years old when he does this Time Magazine interview. And it seems to me that he's trying to keep up a persona and he's using the girlfriends as a way to do it. Give it a listen and see what you guys think. And then we'll get back to Jennifer. Really now, how often do you have sex these days? Well, uh, more often than than uh, in the recent past because I have a bunch of new girlfriends. Uh, I would say on average three or four times a week. The busiest time is the weekend. Everybody's here. Andrew Webster in Sydney, Australia was curious to know, is sex as good at the age of 82 as it is at 33? I wish I remembered more clearly exactly <laughs> what sex was like when I was 33. I would say that sex is better now. Uh, but of course, I know a few more tricks than I knew back then. Uh, and everybody's a good deal more liberated today than, than they were back then. So it's a different kind of sex. And you know, I, I, it, it's no secret that I have more than one girlfriend and, and uh, that makes things a lot more interesting. Do you ever grow tired of the Playboy lifestyle and regret not settling down? I've tried it both ways. I've been married twice. And <laughs> the only time I wasn't having a lot of sex was while I was married. Uh, and I have also expressed on more than one occasion that uh, it is easier to deal with several girlfriends than one wife. And I did, did you not. ever have a deep conversation with Hugh? Seriously, I'm I'm asking because like I'm telling you, I've sat I sat next to him so many times and tried, and I was like, wow. This is so like to make a connection with Hugh Hefner is very difficult. Like, I want to ask your dad, like, how did you do that? That's incredible. My father and half had just a, a, a major commonality of interest. They they read the same books. They enjoyed the same books. They watched the same movies. Um, they are both intellectuals. You know, they were probably both very nerdy as kids, um, and both sort of like you know, had these strange relationships, I think, with their mothers, um, overbearing fathers. Um, they, they just had a lot in common. Um, I definitely believe they were kindred spirits, absolutely. And um, I think it makes complete sense that my father was the one, you know, by his side when he passed. Did, did he tell you anything about that that you could share? Like, uh, did Hugh have any big moment when he passed because he was such a big man it's hard to imagine I don't know just knowing how larger than I, mean, life I know they was. I, mean, I know they had words between them of course yeah. um I know that um like I said I just don't was he you know, sad or scared of or... course okay. my father was so devastated and sad of course it's just like I'm sure it was just like you losing a part of you you know, after being so close to someone for so many decades. And um, I, the best way I could say it is the wives and the girlfriends would come and go. And I just saw my father's relationship with him um, constant, you know, throughout the 40 years. Um, they might have not spoken over a few years. I know they got into a couple of different fights where they didn't speak. And, um, 
you know, just like any kind of relationship, you know, people go in and out of speaking, not speaking. Um, there was the, you know, what the public saw. And then there was a whole other um, reality that I saw. For the full scoop, head to our Patreon page. Click the coin icon on your player to check it out. Crying victim. 